Today, part one of my in-depth music room tour. In this episode, I'm going to show you my stereo setup behind me in detail, plus some behind-the-scenes stuff that you never see. This is one episode you're going to want to watch all the way to the end. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. So let's head down the stairs to the basement. We're going to pass through this area. This is sort of, uh, hey, there's the dog. That's Hendrix or Henry. This is sort of the home theater, the work in progress. I can show you more of this in a future video if anyone is interested. But uh, right now... We're here for the music room. Step inside. This is where the Channel 33 RPM magic happens. This is its a compact space. I've mentioned it before. The music room is approximately 10 feet by 10 feet. Plus, there's a closet. So I really did my best to get as much as I could in here without cramping the space while still having some room to breathe. I think I was successful. This desk is where I typically record my channel 33 RPM videos. I put the camera on that desk and the background you will see behind me is the typical background that you would see in a video. Now I'll go through more detail here with my CDs and my records and everything on top of the shelves later in this video, but let's let's check it out. Let's start here. Why not? These are the, my these are my Kiss comics, a couple of originals. Marvel from the 1970s. I've had these for a while and they were stored away in a box and you know what's the purpose of having something cool stored away in a box? So I grabbed a couple of these frames from IKEA, put the comics in there, and now they are on my wall. I kind of dig it. It's a conversation piece. Moving down, many of you know that I play guitar. Here are a couple of my amps. We got a PV6505 mini head, PV6505 plus, and a Harley Benton 212 cabinet. You may be saying, Frank, why the heck do you have two 6505s? Well, I had the first one, the mini head, and I was using that for jamming with the guys, but it wasn't quite cutting through, wasn't quite loud enough in the garage. So I found a good deal on a U6505 Plus. This thing's a tank. It's a monster. People say it's a metal amp, but it's actually quite versatile if you figure out how to dial it in properly. And I play both of these through the Harley Benton. It's loaded with two 12-inch Celestian speakers. Harley Benton is not a big brand here in North America, but I understand they are big in Europe. I had these sent over to me here in Canada from Germany. I am sure you will recognize this television. It's behind me in all my videos, and I use it to scroll through various images associated with the video I'm doing that day. Got the Channel 33 RPM logo, got Vinyl Dens, the Vinyl Dens logo, Friday Night Vinyl, I love that image, plus the Friday Night Mailbag. And COVID sucks, of course. Vinyl doesn't. It's the truth, ain't it? I was thinking of maybe getting a Roku box for the TV so I could stream shows down here, but this room's not really meant for TV. It's for, for hanging out and listening to tunes. Behind that, I have these LED strips, these LED lights. This technology's sure come a long way. It goes behind all my record cabinets. You can switch between different colors, red, green, blue, white. You can adjust the brightness, and those are relatively inexpensive. I really dig that technology. Over here, I got some things on the wall. Joan Jett signed album. I remember standing in line at a record store back when I was 14 or 15 years old. I was in line for an hour or two to meet Joan, and she signed that, as did her guitarist, Ricky Bird. Got some Ms. Pac-Man, the manual. Big Pac-Man fan. Love this. Channel 33 RPM logo. And this was uh, laser engraved or laser cut into a record. A Channel 33 RPM viewer sent that to me. And Alice Cooper, the Alice Cooper comic. One of my favorites. Love Alice. I'm a big fan of uh, 80s gaming, but we're going to come back to all this. Let us move the camera over here and check out some of this stuff. This is cool. My parents got that for me for Christmas a year or two back. And uh, between you and me, it is full of Crown Royal whiskey. Beside that, Iron Maiden Trooper beer and Kiss Cola. Full confession, I'm not really a fan of either of these two beverages, but they look kind of cool up there. Check out my gear. This is my stereo gear. On top, I got the Marantz PM6004 integrated amp. Below that, the uh, matching CD player, the CD6004. 
I guess you call this entry-level hi-fi or mid-fi gear entry-level audio file, whatever you want to call it. It's not the best, but it sounds pretty, pretty darn good. On top of the integrated amp, I'm not sure if you've ever seen one of these before. This is a NAD or an NAD wireless USB DAC. This allows me to stream high definition audio from my computer straight to my stereo system. What you have here is essentially the receiver. And there's a little transmitter. You plug that into the USB port on your computer. You fire up your favorite music streaming service, whether it's Tidal or Amazon AHD or even Spotify. And as I said, it streams wirelessly right to your stereo. Now, I absolutely love this device. It is capable of streaming in 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. And it was a killer deal. Those were going for about $99 Canadian. I think they're discontinued. But if you're interested in getting into high-definition streaming and you see one of these, it is a great starting point and you can't beat that price. Beside the CD player, we have my cassette deck. This is a Sony TCKA3ES. Found this at a thrift store a while back for 25 bucks. Steal of a deal, especially considering this is a three head cassette player. I mean, the cover of the door is missing, but that doesn't affect sound quality at all. I recently had this serviced and I had the two belts replaced, so it's good to go for a while. Take you over to my turntable. This is a Technics SL1200 Mark II turntable. I recently got it. I gotta tell you, I absolutely love this record player. It may very well be the last turntable I ever buy. It's a tank and it holds consistent speed and it sounds great. When I got it, the dust cover was cracked, so I got this replacement. This is a Reloop dust cover which happened to fit the SL1200 perfectly. If you missed it, I recently did an in-depth review of this particular deck. I will leave the link to that video below this video. I was born in the 70s, but I grew up in the 80s, a child of the 80s. So as I mentioned, uh, it should be no surprise, I'm still a fan of 80s gaming. When I was a kid, 12 years old or so, I had one of these little Pac-Man units. And I don't know what I did with it, but I found this one on the online classifieds a while back for like 30 or 40 bucks. So I jumped at the chance to buy it. And the joystick here is sticking a little bit, so I gotta find someone or find some way to fix that, but it still works. Here is my favorite record cleaning brush. This is a classic disc washer. I've done an in-depth video about the disc washer brush. If you missed that one, I will leave a link to that below this video as well. I also love the Groove Washer. The Groove Washer is a newer record cleaning brush, obviously heavily influenced and inspired by the disc washer. This is uh, the kit. It comes with the stylus cleaner and it comes with a record cleaning brush. I should have cleaned this before I showed it on camera. It is uh, dusty and you gotta remember to keep your record cleaning brushes clean. There you see the, the two side by side, the classic and the new one. I got a couple of these cubbies, these drawers or cupboards in my record shelves and I store stuff in here, a whole bunch of stuff for record maintenance, including of course, the zero stat, the multi zero stat, use that to blast static off your records. People ask me if it works, it certainly does. I got the record roller. You use that to literally roll the dust off the surface of your vinyl. That works as well. I did a recent video on the record roller. What else do we have here? We got moon gel. Moon gel is an alternative way to clean your uh, stylus, your needle. I did a video on this. The video is called Life Hacks for Record Collectors. It is a cheap and affordable way to keep your stylus clean. Similarly, we have the Onzao Zero Dust. It is more expensive. I think this thing's like 50 bucks or so, um, but it's another way to clean your stylus. And here I have a couple record weights I want to show you. This one is from Groove Washer. It's hefty, it's nice, it's well built, and it works. I know the vinyl community is split on the usefulness of record weights, um, but I dig them. I don't use them all the time, but I do use them from time to time. Here's another one. This one was sent to me from the fine folks at 1441 Engraving. If you haven't seen this, check it out. Channel 33 RPM logo. Now, how cool does that look? I have various other odds and ends in here. I have some refills of my Groove Washer record cleaning fluid. I also have uh, fluid to clean CDs. 
keeping your CDs clean and free of fingerprints is as important as keeping your records clean and fingerprint free. This one's cool. This came from Keg Laboratories. This is a solution used to clean your gear. It works really well on, you know, a lot of turntables now have that piano finish, a really shiny black finish. This gets that nice and clean. And just back there, I got some D4. That's the uh, original record cleaning solution that came with the disc washer brush. Speaking of disc washer, I got another one. This one's actually better condition than the one I showed you earlier. So I'm going to have to um, swap these out. Again, in my view, the disc washer was the best record cleaning brush ever made. Unfortunately, the real ones were discontinued a while back. And, oh, okay, I got a stylus alignment gauge. Use this to um, align the stylus for your SL1200 turntables. It's essential if you own a classic Technics. And what else? That's about it. Let's move over here. I have another cupboard on this side. And again, various things in there. I got some guitar picks and other stuff in this little glass jar and I also keep here my 10 inch records and my 7 inch records. I don't have a lot of those. 10 inch are cool but I kind of view them almost as uh, as a novelty. That's the glow in the dark Ghostbusters. I thought I had lost it but I found it. And uh, you know, a few others in here. Alice Cooper and uh, some Judas Priest a record store day release and some Anthrax and of course a 10 inch that a viewer sent me as well. I always hold on to all this stuff. In the front I got a few 7 inch. I sold most of my 7 inch this past summer. Felt they're taking up space and I wasn't really listening to them all that often. But I did keep some cool ones. This is one of my favorites. This is Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz, Crazy Train. This is their radio edit. And you can't make it out there, but it says from the forthcoming album, Blizzard of Oz. So this was actually released before the Blizzard of Oz album came out. That wraps up the first part of my in-depth tour of the music room. I hope you dug it. Stick around. In a week or two, I will have part two. In part two, we'll take a close look at some of the cooler records on these record shelves. I will also show you inside my music room closet where I have my collection of record players and other audio gear. I know you will dig it, so please do come back for that. If you liked today's episode, I appreciate a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Dear 33ers, have a great week. We'll see you again real soon. Until then, keep on spinning. <laughs>